concerns that we'll be trying today. Uh, Martin O'Neill, Jeff Hendrick. Uh, we're going to do the fourth part live, and then I'll do an embargo for the second part. So the embargo will be tomorrow morning, so at nine o'clock, or, or sorry, seven o'clock. So I'll let you know when the office is going. Martin, can I ask you um, your thoughts on Denmark and uh, how, you appro how you're hoping to approach the game tomorrow? Well, um, Denmark obviously the beat us, beat us convincingly last year, about 11 months ago. So I think we would like to uh, we'd like to redress that if we can. Naturally, this is part of uh, preliminary um, stages of the. Uh, of the um, uh, the league itself, the Nations League as it's called, and so three points for grabs as well. I'd like to try and win the game if we can. The players are in good form. Um, as uh, it's just been mentioned, there we all trained today. She and Long trained as well, so and um, and we're ready to go. The lack of Ericsson in their side, you've got to see that as a bonus, I suppose. Oh, well, a, a world-class player, of course, that, that is true. I'm sure in the same way that they would look at some of the players that we have missing ourselves, uh, players who did uh, brilliantly for us, obviously, world-class uh, player and our captain in the team is missing, uh, Seamus Coleman. And, of course, we haven't had the services of uh, uh, Robbie Brady, James uh, McCarthy for some time. But we have some terrific footballers in including the man beside me, who's got some experience now, did great in the um, in the Euros a couple of years ago. Now it's a matter, as we mentioned before, I was asked this question. I think um, I think he's capable now of taking on that mantle and kicking on, not only in his own career, but obviously for, for us at uh, international level. The fact that Jeff is here, does that suggest that you're uh, going to pick him? The, the last pre-match press conference, you had David Myler alongside you. Uh, yeah, I had David. Uh, yeah, um, um, I think that. Um, well, uh, okay. Uh, David wasn't going to play. I wasn't going to start David, although he didn't know that at the time. And um, but uh, Jeff is definitely going to start because he is uh, he is um, one of our major players, and um, and I think he's ready to go. Is that a bit of a relief for you, Jeff, to hear that news? That I'm going to start. Yeah, uh, it's, it's very good. Uh, I always enjoy playing for my country, and it was such a big game. Uh, you know, we, we all want to perform well, and we want to get get a good result on Saturday night. So uh, I'm delighted. Yeah. Is the squad hurting from the last Denmark game and even the last game against Wales? Uh, it, it, Everybody's hurting, uh, you know, we were, uh, the fans were, and that's the way it was, that's the way the game turned out, it wasn't a good night, but like the manager said, we've, we've got a lot of new faces in now, we've had a good week's training, everyone's worked hard, everyone's looking bright, and we're looking forward to the game, uh, and, and we're going to make sure that we get the result we need. Martin, have you decided what system you're going to play? I mean, against Poland, you did look at uh, playing wing backs. Yeah, I think it's it's. Um, I think it's the one that um, uh, players are able to adapt to. I think uh, we've played a back four system for quite some considerable time. We tried um, we tried the, um, the the back three so that players could be comfortable with it. I think they are, and I think also some of the players, for instance. Um, uh, young Doherty playing so well at wing back role um, um, for for Wolves, obviously. Uh, things like this here. I don't think that players are uncomfortable playing in, in either role. Martin, um, just looking back to the last campaign, uh, I think you'd agree that it was the, f the home form that cost uh, Ireland a place at the World Cup. Is there a quick fix to the home form um, over the next two matches, or do you think there's something needs to happen to uh, re-energise the Irish crowd? Well, I, I, I don't think the, the, the crowd need, need uh, re-energising at all. I think it's up to us uh, to do that on the field of play. And I don't think that... I think sometimes these things can happen. You can have some home games where you don't pick up the points and uh, it puts, obviously, a lot of pressure on trying to win away from home, which we were able to do. In fact, we didn't lose a game away from home. 
And um, but the previous campaign we picked uh, in the in the Euros. I don't think that the I don't think well certainly in my time here and I think probably before that I don't think the crowd have needed re-energising. We need to we need to re-energise the crowd. If that's the case. There have been some great great nights there. We've had um, terrific nights. We're going to get um, a really decent crowd again uh, on Saturday. So I don't think that the the fans have deserted the team by any stretch of the imagination. I think that they're um, I think the fans. Uh, have been really, really supportive of the team. It's up to us now on the field of play to do something about it. And just in terms of, uh, you touched on it in the last uh, the last answer. Um, you're confident the players can adjust to whatever system you play. And you, you speak, you've spoken at length before about players knowing their role in the on the pitch and knowing their job on the pitch. Are you confident that they'll know exactly what's expected of them, both tactically and formation-wise, um, on Saturday? Absolutely. More live questions, Derek. Hi, Martin. Uh, Matt Doherty was mentioned already. Uh, how important is club form in your thinking of team selection as opposed to maybe what you see on the training pitch and you see with Ireland itself? How important is it, or where does club form come into your thinking for team selections? Well, I think, I think initially club form is very important. It's very important, first of all, for someone to be playing in their, in their club team, to be playing regularly for a start, and then also to be playing well and then to be playing at a high level. So th all of those things are very, very important. We don't have that luxury throughout the squad of players playing every single week for their teams, even in championship football. So we have to make adjustments. But of course, in an ideal world, it'd be great if all our players were playing in the big league and, uh, and playing pretty regularly. But uh, yeah, so, so form, obviously, for, for, uh, at club level, is still very important in terms of selection. And uh, how important are good um, results and performances over the next couple of days uh, in terms of team morale, even more so than the Nations League table? Obviously, the last two competitive results have been pretty disappointing. Mm. So how important is it for morale in the camp to, that you get a... Yeah, well, the two, two results have been set, uh, I think, 10 or 11 months apart. In, in between that, I think we've capped uh, 10 or 11 players. So some of these young players do need uh, time to adjust. And, um, and I think that that's what they've been trying to do. I think that they all feel as if they don't want to be one cap wonders. Of course, again, just to your very point that you made before that, club form is very important. Some of the players who did fine for us in Poland less than it's only a month ago find themselves not playing um, or not starting in their teams at championship level. So then they have to come back, readjust and, and get prepared again for, a, for a, an international game. Those things just take a little bit of time. And, uh, and it's something that we might not have a great deal of. Jeff mentioned that uh, we, we came in here, we've been three or four days training, and that's been great. But players still have to psychologically adjust to the fact that they haven't played the last couple of weeks at club level or haven't started in matches and may well um, be forced into these big, big games here um, and, and have to just have to adjust and have to be have to apply themselves. So all of those things are very important. And uh, how have you found the Nations League so far? Um, obviously, you know, the, the fact you have more competitive games is probably a positive, but is the fact that you can't maybe experiment as much as you used to be able to, maybe with international friendlies, is that a negative for yourself? Or how, how are you finding the Nations League in itself? No, so we, we, we've only played the one game at the moment and uh, obviously got beaten by Wales in that match. So we've got these games, as you've mentioned earlier, to try and um, redress the balance if we can. Um, but um, yeah, I I think that um, rather than playing a host of friendly games, uh, we would uh, I think that we would have welcomed it. It's, it's it's absolutely fine, although it's it's not to everyone's pleasing, but it's fine. And um, and the interesting thing for us is that uh, had the competition started in earnest and they hadn't had these things, you know, we would have been going into a lot of matches in September and October here and possibly next month with a host of, of players that would generally be starting in our team not available. So from that viewpoint, when the competition starts in earnest in, in March, you'd be hoping, it doesn't always work out that way, that you'd be hoping that the players that we're talking about uh, who are missing, who are top quality players for us, would be available then. Martin, I'm Kean from 
discovery networks in Denmark. And the publication of, of Stephen Ward's WhatsApp message, is that anything, is, have, you been, have, you been, have you addressed the players in regards to the content of that? How has that affected the no, team? No, I think that, uh, St well, I thought you were going to say, is that why Stephen's not in the squad? No, Stephen had uh, an operation on Monday. And um, I think Jeff's in a position to uh, uh, to qualify that because he's been working with him the last couple of weeks. I think that um, I think that uh, uh, he had a problem at the back of his knee, and uh, he just needed to get that sorted out. So he went under the uh, he went under the surgeon's knife on uh, on Monday Monday afternoon or Tuesday morning. But anyway, uh, in terms of his WhatsApp, no, I think that um, I think that. Um, Uh, I, I think he'll. Is there such a thing as him taking himself off the WhatsApp? Is it? Yeah, he, he can do that. <laughs> can he? I, I, I'm, I'm sure he will. But in terms of has it has it affected the relationship between Roy Keane perhaps and, and some of the players that this has oh, been publicly? No, no, we had we had the situation. I, uh, we had the situation with uh, Harry Arter before that, which was the whole leader, and um, that has been addressed and it's fine. Harry's training here at the moment. And um, uh, the the um, the player and the assistant manager are in good terms now, and really the rest is up to is up to Harry. And Jeff, if I can ask you a question as well about kind of the the, the personality that Roy Keane brings and and the way that he communicates communicates is that something that that uh, how do you find that? Uh, yeah, I I enjoy it. Um, you know, after the the last game. We played Wales, and there was a, a few a few clips that you know I I didn't do do well in, and, and I sat down with him, and, and he talked me through it and helped me, and I tried to put that into practice in the Poland game, and and personally I thought my performance was better, and and yeah, I'm sure he done it with a few other players, and uh, the team's performance was better as well. So um, you know we we'll, we we'll keep sitting down and. And picking his brain, and he plays in the same position. Well, he played in the same position as I do, so yeah, it's always good to do that. Okay. Jeff, for you, uh, how do you look back on the last game against Denmark and the night where you didn't qualify for for the World Cup? How do you look back? Oh, you know, we didn't. Um, we had drawn in the match in uh, Copenhagen. And uh, we're coming back here with uh, uh, confidence in the game. Uh, we took the lead, and my own view is that um, you know, supposition now, anyway. But um, we had a chance to make it two nil, and uh, had James McLean's shot gone in side of the post and away from home, I think we had have gone to Russia. That said, uh, Denmark fought back. Great credit to them. Scored two goals in a minute, which meant then that we had to chase the game in the second half. We chased the game um, and um, and um, got picked off in the match, and we had a world class performance from a world class player who uh, who simply was uh, sublime on the night and um, and played very well. So uh, in the end, we were well beaten in the match. <laughs>